to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week you join us in the northern city of Dreux, famed for its rich history, royal chapel, and boarded up shops. As a number of French towns, Dreux has fallen prey to a worrying trend urban desertification. As a growing number of giant retail chains open up shop on the outskirts of the country's towns, consumers have abandoned city centres, forcing smaller stores out of business. We start with an overview of the situation. City centers are dying a slow death. That's the message from hundreds of French mayors. Shops especially are taking a hit, and in particular since 2010. In cities of 25,000 people or more, 11.3% of storefronts are empty. And in cities home to 40 to 50,000 residents, lights go off at 7 p.m. In 40 years, France gained 16 million people, but lost 3 million stores. The zone between the country's southwest and northeast is strongly affected. Those areas already suffer from a failing economy and low population counts. Instead, residents are moving to the suburbs, where two-thirds of French people now live. Commercial centers are popping up in these areas, and they're getting 22% bigger. Local officials vowed to bring stores back to the city center with promises of lower taxes and investment in public equipment. The goal is to bring life back to once thriving urban areas by targeting the consumption habits of their residents. Faced with this threat, some mayors are stepping up to save their fading city centres, taking on the retail giants in long and often complex legal battles. Up and down France and on the outskirts of towns, shopping centres like this one continue to spread and sprawl. They're eating up close to two million square metres of land each year. So all of this area here, right up to the fire station you can see over there, and then up to here. This business owner shows us the farmland on which a brand spanking new 5,000 square metre shopping mall will be built. If the project gets the green light, it will stand just three kilometres from Neuville-sur-Saône. Its 7,500 inhabitants already have some 200 shops to choose from in the town centre. The mayor is putting her foot down. Protecting the businesses in these historic streets is her main priority. We need to have this eclectic and diverse mix of shops and boutiques. We need to cater to everyone's tastes and needs. Her crusade to block the shopping centre's construction has already achieved some early wins. But the developers could still appeal. We honestly don't have a great amount of power to wield. All we can attack is the legal errors in the dossier. The ruling here stipulated that the mall would take up too much space and that the blueprints aren't environmentally friendly enough. This other local mayor knows such legal battles well. For seven years, he's been fighting to stop the cranes and cement mixers moving on to this site. He's refused a building permit countless times, and each time his refusal is attacked. I'll use all the lawyers I have to. I'm not going to be walked all over, and I'm not going to sacrifice the commercial fabric of my village just for a few legal fees. While the latest appeal is mulled over, he's got a new tactic. He wants to change the PLU, a set of rules which outline what can be built in a town. He says the land is now set aside for social housing. So this is where I say to the owners of this land who want to turn it into a shopping centre that actually it's not now possible. Town officials also know that they can rely on the help of this couple of former shop owners. They've made it their mission to take on these big out-of-town shopping centres, but they've noticed that mayors have all too often caved into developers. Officials find these large-scale projects attractive because they bring in taxes and because developers promise mayors that jobs will be created. While no mayor would say that job creation is a bad thing, these mammoth shopping emporiums are leaving town centres more and more deserted. And the French government remains divided about how to proceed. 
Well, because the key to reviving these areas lies in bringing back shoppers, an alternative, if costly, solution is to boost the appeal of city centres by offering incentives to small businesses or easy access to consumers. Luring residents back to the city centre with a free shuttle bus. Local officials approved this 20-seater that connects the suburbs to downtown businesses every afternoon. It's to make the city centre more dynamic and it brings people to the city. They come not only to explore but also to buy. It is very practical. I go into town far more than before. This shuttle bus has definitely found its market, pulling in 30,000 passengers a year. In the town of Montauban, the number of empty homes in the city centre has doubled over 15 years. Yet in that period, the population has grown. But most of the town's residents live in the outskirts. The town's mayor is tackling the issue head on. Brigitte Barège decided to buy abandoned buildings and renovate them with public funds. The overall cost of the building stands at 140,000 euros. We won't get back all the money we invested, we're aware of that. But the government wants to rehabilitate homes in city centres. In total, 80 buildings were bought by the municipality to be renovated and sold to private owners. Bringing back residents and opening shops go hand in hand. In Noyon, the municipality put in place a new policy. This former medical secretary opened a handbag and accessory store and pays 500 euros a month for her rent for a year instead of 750. I even branched out, because at first I only sold bags, and now I sell hats and caps. So that shows it's working. Her income is still low, but she's got a growing clientele. Municipal projects like the one in Noyon are popping up all over the country in different forms, and more initiatives like free downtown parking are also on the table. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by my guest, journalist Olivier Razmont, who's written a book about France's urban desertification. Hello, thank you very much for being with us. Bonjour. Uh, now, first, how widespread and how recent is this phenomenon? It's very widespread. We're here in Dreux, a city of 30,000 people that's not too far from Paris. Here, 15% of businesses have closed. But in many cities in France, from north to south, east to west, we're seeing exactly the same thing, with many empty stores. It affects regions that are concerned by deindustrialization, but it also affects regions with lower rates of unemployment. It's a phenomenon that's in some ways fairly old, but it's getting worse and worse. Fifteen years ago, around 7 to 8 percent of shops were empty. Today, we're at almost 12 percent nationally. So this situation is getting worse every year. So who or what is to blame for this state of affairs? Cities, for example, have been stretched out over a much wider area, meaning the facilities of the city, its attributes, its businesses, and also its public facilities and services, its hospitals, its living areas, have all been taken out and spread over a wide area, thus creating an urban sprawl. And this was all done subconsciously. No one thought about the consequences. It was done because it was the easiest thing to do. And the result is a situation in which we find ourselves in today. And it's not limited uh, to retail. Historic city centres are emptying out of their residents. Uh, tell us a little bit about this drop in population in these areas. Exactly. Here in Dreux, we have 30,000 residents. Fifteen years ago, there were 35,000. It's not at all the exception. We find the same situation in many French cities. Residents didn't go far. They're not in Lyon or Paris. They simply moved to the smaller surrounding towns. Cities are losing residents, not just city centres, but entire cities. What we often forget, what we often discount when we think of businesses, is that the average income of these residents is lower than that of people in the surrounding towns. Towns. It's the opposite of what we see in big cities like Paris or Strasbourg, where city dwellers are richer than those in the suburbs. Here, the residents in the city are not as rich as the residents in the neighboring towns. And what might be the consequences for French society? 
That's the question. The city represents society. It's the space where we run into each other, where we intersect. It's the space where we stay connected to one another. It's also quite simply just the space where we see each other. If we don't bump into each other in the city anymore, there's a very high chance we'll soon begin to fear one another. So all of French society is at stake. So would you say that France needs to rethink its attitude to urban planning? That's exactly right. In France, we've expanded urban sprawl with no second thoughts. Today, we need to realign the city. We need to give the city back its badge of honour. We thought that French society could easily move around everywhere and always by private car. But we need to rethink this and ask ourselves how else we can get around. So yes, above all, it's a question of urban planning and urban sprawl. I notice in countries where cities are much more concentrated, which is the case in Italy and Germany, for example, cities are doing much better. And there's also an attachment to cities that's much stronger in these countries. Olivier Rasmond, thank you very much for having spoken to us. Avec plaisir. Well, so we're leaving this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France Minka. Eye on Africa, presented by Georgia Calvin Smith. Africa News and your eyes on Africa. And bringing you the latest from across the continent. Eye on Africa, on France 24 and France24.com.